Prime Minister, thank you, thank you very much for coming along this morning. It's a great, great uh, pleasure to be here. Thanks to Electric City and to the, of course, the Herrhausen Foundation. It was 213 years ago that a group of thrilling, thrusting young British scientists and technicians created the Royal Institution. And it was there men like Davy and Faraday made the breakthroughs, benzene, sodium, electromagnetism, that uh, led to the very machines that generated electricity in the building in which we now sit, that drove the Industrial Revolution and made this city the heart of the greatest industrial and commercial empire the world has ever seen. And it is in that tradition that we are today announcing this fantastic vision for a silicon roundabout hub. Whether or not it will be the royal silicon roundabout hub, I don't know, but I'm interested in what you had to say about the role of the, uh, of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, uh, Prime Minister. But it will be a place where technicians and entrepreneurs can meet and ideas can cross-pollinate and where apprentices can be trained and where young people can get the skills they need to compete in what is already the biggest, most thriving technical cluster in the whole of Europe. Rowan uh, tried to correct me on my figures earlier on, but I have them right. Uh, 24,000 IT businesses already in London, compared to only 15,500 in Paris. Uh, we, are watching, <laughs> we are watching that cluster. We are watching that cluster spread ever eastwards. And I, th I, I really congratulate the government on uh, picking this up very early on. And yesterday we announced that uh, BT is going to take 100,000 square feet in that great Olympic media and broadcast center, the IBC, MPC, the first uh, a fantastic anchor tenant for what I think will be a, uh, an amazing venue for uh, high-tech firms in, in the east of London. All we need is a, a snappier name than IBC, MPC. So I look to you, brilliant, I mean, the Techodrome, something like that. We need, some, we need some better name, I think, than IBC, MPC. But, and, and last week, when I was in India, we had uh, two Indian IT companies, Nazara and Smartplay, both announcing that they were choosing London. And you can see why. Uh, it's got all the, it's got everything going for it. It's got the, it's got the time zone, it's got the language, it's got more Michelin-starred restaurants in Paris, I think, more or less. Uh, it's got, <laughs> certainly, got, certainly got twice as many bookshops uh, as New York, if you continue to use that old uh, technology. Uh, it's got less rainfall than Rome. It's got a, 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 a steadily declining crime rate, by the way, and all sorts of other wonders and amenities, brilliant view, blue, burly, banker-funded bicycles, all sorts of things, all sorts of wonder, wonderful things about, about London uh, these days. But what it also has, what this part of London has, is what I can only call the vibe. Uh, the, do you know what I mean by the vibe? The cafes, the nightlife, all the things that you associate with, with Shoreditch and this part of, of the city. And uh, Dave, Prime Minister, I've got to be absolutely honest with you, I don't think there's much that you or I can do, frankly, powerful though you are as politicians, uh, there's not much that you or I can do to affect the vibe in a positive way, you see what I mean? There's not much we can do about the vibe, but what we can do, with no disrespect, what we can do, what we, even if we dance Gangnam Style, what we can do, what we can do is put in the infrastructure, put in the infrastructure, and that I think you're doing absolutely the right thing. And I congratulate you, I congratulate everybody at number 10, Rohan, people who have pursued this vision uh, for so long. We're putting in uh, the tube lines that London needs. We've great news yesterday from the Chancellor about the Northern Line extension. Two new stations at, uh, at Battersea and Nine Elms now. That will mean uh, massive numbers of new homes and new jobs in our city. We're going to put in new river crossings. Uh, we're going to sort out our aviation capacity issues rapidly. And we're now, I think, by this investment, uh, asserting London's lead as the tech capital of Europe, if not of the world. And I think it's a wonderful vision. This will be, uh, this, or, or I should say, or something like it, because this is you know, very much an artist's impression. Uh, this will be the cyclotron, the cyclotron in which brilliant people of all ages will collide like subatomic particles. If I've, if I've got my physics right, which I probably haven't, they will collide and they will produce the blinding flash that will lead to the billion pound industries of the future. And people ask, why is it 
that London has never yet produced a Google or an Amazon or a Microsoft or whatever? The answer is there is no reason why not. It will happen, and it will happen here. Where was the first machine gun invented? In which London borough? It was in, well, it was in Hatton Garden. It was in, where, was the, where was the first cash machine in the world? Enfield, thank you. Very good. Where was the first television set, the first cathode ray, where was the first television set ever turned on? In a, that's absolutely right. In a, boom, a room above what is now the Bar Italia in Frith Street in Soho. Where was Charles Darwin where, where he, when, he, when he first postulated the doctrine, the theory of evolution? The most important scientific development of the last 200 years. Where was he? Bromley, of course. When you go to Bromley, you meet the people of Bromley, you understand why he, he, he came up with the, the idea of natural selection and the survival. But more importantly, where was, where, was, where was Sir Johnny Ive? Where was Sir Johnny Ive, uh, the, the great, great designer of the iPad and that machine that you're using there? Where was Sir Johnny Ive born and raised? Uh, ladies and gentlemen? Does anybody know where he was in which London borough that I'm proud to represent? Well, he was born and raised in Romford, ladies and gentlemen. When you go to Romford and you allow yourself to be penetrated by the beauty of Romford, you will understand how he, how he Johnny I, formed the aesthetic that allowed him to develop some of the most beautiful machines that have ever been wielded by mankind. That is the kind of thing that is going to be produced in this wonderful silicon roundabout. I thank number 10, I thank the government uh, for their vision and their support, and good luck to all who are going to make it happen. Thank you very much.